Good morning. Welcome to the Insecure Chef. I'm here uh, with my lovely wife Regina and camera good, lady. Good morning. And um, today we're going to make a breakfast dish. It's uh, very early for me, not so early for my wife, and definitely not early for my dog. But uh, the dish we're going to make today is called Dutch Baby. Now, sometimes it's called the Bismarck, sometimes it's called the Hoot Nanny, sometimes it's called the Dutch Puff. How do I know that? I looked it up. Anyway, uh, the Dutch Baby is easy to make. Uh, much easier than making regular babies, I guess. But um, it's a delicious uh, confection. And for those who uh, have ever heard of Yorkshire pudding uh, from England, it's very similar to that. Um, but this has a uh, creamier and uh, more custody uh, center point to it. Very simple. Basically just uh, eggs, flour, and milk, a little vanilla and salt, and uh, that's, that's about the whole thing. Shazam. So we're going to get started and uh, I'm using here a blender. Uh, this happens to be a uh, uh, an older ninja blender but any blender will work as long as it's got the capacity to handle the uh, volume. So I'm going to be starting with that right now and the first thing that uh, it's going to go in are our uh, our eggs. Um, that's really mere stimulants. I'll start with the milk. I like that better. So we have two-thirds of a cup of room temperature milk. Very important, I'll say it again, room temperature milk. And you'll, the eggs as well are at room temperature. Don't skip that step, otherwise you're going to have a very flat Dutch baby. So this is uh, two-thirds of a cup that's going in. Like that. Now I'm going to add the three eggs. Hopefully, my wife put it in a bowl. I'm not used to pouring from that. So I'm going to hope that I don't make a mess. Alrighty, the eggs are in. The uh, next thing that's going to go in is the uh, flour. Flour is a very critical item, obviously, since this is majority of a flour. I would suggest you weigh it. Four ounces of flour. And I mean on a scale. Don't use a cup, don't use a dry measure. I suggest uh, taking this, tearing off your cup, and then measuring out four ounces. Makes it, in my opinion, much simpler and no guesswork. So, flour is going in right now. There we go. Flour's in. And next, I'm going to be adding uh, the uh, extract, vanilla extract. I like to use, uh, you know, a reasonable quantity. You can use anything from a quarter of a te teaspoon to an entire teaspoon. I'm going to use a whole teaspoon. We like the vanilla flavor. There's a teaspoon going in. Right, let me close that up. And that leaves us with a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Just regular table salt is fine. Quarter of a teaspoon going in. All right, that's good. Quarter of a teaspoon is in. And that is the entire set of ingredients. I'm going to shut this sucker up and uh, we're going to blend it and I'll let you know how long that is. Let me lock this. There's the lock and here we go. Okay, we're back and we blended. Uh, the blending time on, on this is uh, probably about a minute, but what really counts uh, for you is to make sure that this comes out as a nice creamy batter. Now, if you take a look inside here, You'll see it is. All right, that's good. And uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to take a um, cast iron skillet. The reason I say cast iron is because this is going to get put in the oven for about 18 minutes at 425. So cast iron is the way to go. If you don't have cast iron, then you should, well, you have to have then a non-stick pan that's high temperature oven safe. Don't try it with any other pan with wooden handles or rubber. That would be a disaster. So, um, cast iron is the best way to go or a very good, high-quality, non-stick, high-temperature pan. So, we're putting this over the heat right now. Now, what's in there, if you look, you'll see that there's a melted material in there. That's ghee. Okay, ghee is clarified butter. Let me take a look for inside in case for you folks who have never seen it before. Okay, it's simply butter. It can be used as butter. But it has no, um, no fats in that regard. So you put it in, you melt it, and you get it very hot. 
Uh, I'm gonna make sure this is at a good temperature. Uh, yeah, okay. And don't forget, this pan will get very hot, even right down to the handle. So, you know, eventually you're gonna need gloves. Okay, so I'm gonna let that just heat up just another 10, 15 seconds. It's been heating a while. You're not just melting this, you're getting it hot, almost to a smoke point, okay? So you'll start to see a wisp of smoke now. I'm gonna take out the, uh, the blender uh, blade. I'm gonna take off, and I'm gonna pour this into the, uh, into the hot pan. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, we'll get as much as we can out of there. All right, so that's in there. So now with the oven heated to 425 degrees, preheated to 425, just gonna let that sit there for just a few seconds actually while I put my gloves on. You don't want it to sit up there too long because uh, then the bottom crust of the baby will get a little crunchy, so we don't wanna do that. Okay, so I'm gonna be opening up the uh, stove here. Uh, let me make sure this is the way I want it. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty good. I'm uh, just making this hot. Okay. Yeah, that should be good. And I'm going to put it in the oven here. I'm very careful because it's heavy. Okay, that's in there. And now I'm going to set the timer for about, uh, about 18 minutes. But as we cook it, we'll talk about when... You think it's time to come out. So I'm putting this on to 18. Hit the start. And uh, we're ready to go. We'll be back shortly. Okay, let's take a look, see how we're doing with this. Uh, yeah, looking good. And you see it's puffing up very nicely. It's probably got about another five minutes or so. All right, and uh, we'll be back when it's done. Okay, I think we're done. We're going to open up, take a look. You guys can see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks beautiful. Let's take that guy out. There we are. That's what it should look like. And uh, this went about 16 minutes. So again, it could take 18, 17. It's your call. It depends how brown you want it. So we carefully take it out now because it's heavy, of course, and it's red hot. Get it up here safely on the stove. All right, let me close down. And then I'm going to uh, keep my glove on here so I don't kill myself. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to brush it uh, with melted butter. Okay, I just melted a tablespoon or so of butter. I'm just going to brush it around here like that. Alrighty. Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice buttery texture on the outside. Yeah, so this was about a tablespoon or so. Uh, it's your call how much you want. Obviously, you could use more or less, whatever you think. All right, so I'm just about done with that. And now, uh, the next quick step will be I'm going to add a little uh, lemon juice. I was out of fresh lemon, so I'm using bottled. Just a little splashing of the uh, lemon juice. It's a nice flavor. You'll hear that nice sizzle as lemon juice hits the pan. All right, and then we're gonna uh, finish it off. Well, let me just move that lemon juice around a little bit. Yeah. And now we're gonna finish it off with uh, a little uh, confectionery sugar. And this is a nice touch because as you saw when we made it, there is no sugar in the recipe. So this kind of adds a, a little dimension to it. Not necessary, it's up to you. You can use cinnamon sugars, you can use anything. Also, this entire recipe could be made with fruit. Uh, we also make a blueberry one, we make one with powdered ginger. So, any combination would work. And that's the uh, finished product. You'll see the souffle, like all souffles, it, it, it goes down. And uh, once it cools, uh, we'll cut it and uh, serve it. We'll be right back. All right, so here is the finished products. We simply cut it out of the uh, cast iron pan with the usual cake cutter. And um, let me get this a little bit closer to the camera. Hopefully you can see the 
custody nature of the center. And uh, I assure you, they're delicious. Now, you can finish this off uh, the way it is, or you could use uh, pancake syrups, uh, more butter, cinnamon, fruit compotes, whatever you would like on the top. So, hopefully this is a dish you'll enjoy, and it's, as you see, it's quite simple to make. So, from the Insecure Chef and his lovely wife, Regina. Enjoy your day. Okay, have a good day, and let me know how this works out for you.